Rich Lieberman, Lee Hill District. Um, let's start with January 10th, since you have that back on your agenda. Um, as Mr. Searles brought up, you're being sued over that. Um, and I read through the minutes. And it's really interesting is after you're being sued, you have on your agenda to change those minutes because that's what you're being sued over is what's in there. And I'm like, what kind of cover up is that? I mean, you don't think an attorney is just going to tear that apart saying that's a confession of wrongdoing? I mean, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> that's unfathomable to me. Um, so let's talk about the carryover funds. Um, first off, I want to say it's a real shame that a group of us went there to advocate for the carryover funds and Ms. Shelley and Dr. Daniels and Ms. Cole joined us. But I didn't see Mr. Abuzmal, I didn't see Ms. Gillespie, I didn't see Mr. Twig, I didn't see Ms. Phelps there advocating to get that money. At the, and you, you were actually there earlier in the day, but you left before advocating for the carryover. At the budget hearing, the same people, the same board members were there advocating to fund your budget. Y'all didn't show up. Almost every speaker was there for funding the schools, but you couldn't bother. And, and I agree that everybody needs to work on their behavior, but Mr. Twig, part of the problem of the behavior, I blame on the chair. And that's because, see, and you've got your signs being held up too. We're talking about the disrespect. But a chair's job is to be nonpartisan in the job as a chair. You're supposed to work with all your board members, communicate with all your board members when you have stuff coming up. How many of them say, I'll email you and you won't respond? You don't send out information to all the board members. So that creates this problem because then you have them getting upset because they're finding out at the 11th hour, right before the meeting starts, things that they should be able to research, ask questions about. Just please, let me finish speaking, please, sir. Um, so let's go back to the care over funds. You, ha you had your meeting. You're supposed to have the, the meeting. You changed it. I'm sorry. You, you changed the carryover funds, the intent. You knew you were going to do this for months, but you waited until after the carryover hearing when the public couldn't have any input. And you took away the mid-year raises, but we couldn't speak about it. And Ms. Gillespie, I actually commend you on something. You, I commend you on trying to fund the arts programs and the non-football sports. That's actually a very important thing, and I agree with you. Unfortunately, with the carryover funds was not the way to do it. The reason being is all those funds have to be expended by June 30th. And that means not only expended, but they have to have the goods in hand. I own a business. I'm struggling to get product for the fall right now. That's how it is in this world environment. But they have to go spend that money. So they don't get to spend it on what they really need. They have to spend it on whatever they can get that they might need. Now, some programs will benefit. Some, it's going to be wasted. It's the exact thing people complain about. Government, spend it, use it or lose it. And you've set up that situation for some of these programs by using this carryover fund that has to be expended by June 30th. Um, you know, just, anyways, I have a solution for the budget gap, Mr. Twig. Why don't you just sell the rights to these meetings for national TV? It's become a laughing stock anyways. A TV show will pay you the gap money you need. All right, thank you.